Hello, this is the seventh video on the series of multivariable calculus videos. So in this video, we're going to talk about space curves, how to parameterize them, and then we'll do some examples. A space curve, as we discussed in the previous video, is the trace of a vector valued function. So if you have a space curve, then we say this is space curve is closed if the initial point and the terminal point are the same. So if you start from point t equals a and you go all the way to point t equals b i'm assuming that t is basically time so i'm traveling along this curve if i come back to the same point then we say this is a, a closed space curve so let's look at a couple of examples consider the curves given by r1 of t equals cosine t sine t zero and r2 of t equals cosine t sine t t and t is between zero and two pi we want to determine if each curve is closed sketch each curve uh, right with an arrow indicate the direction in which the curve is traversed as t increases okay so let's look at the first one so if we look at the first one we see that the initial point is cosine of zero sine of 0, 0, which is 1, 0, 0. And if we look at the terminal point, it's cosine of 2 pi, sine of 2 pi, 0, which is also 1, 0, 0. So the first curve, R1 of t, is in fact a closed curve. Now, let's look at the next one. We're going to uh, look at this one. I'm going to plug in different uh, endpoints of this curve. The endpoints are going to be, if I call it R2, R2 of 0 is going to be cosine of 0, sine of 0, 0. So that's the same point that we started with for the other curve. However, R2 of 2 pi is going to be cosine of 2 pi, which is 1, sine of 2 pi, which is 0, so the same point. The t component, though, changes so this is one this one is not closed so r2 of t is not uh, a closed curve okay so the next part of this is to sketch these two curves the first one is x equals cosine of uh, cosine of t y equals sine of t and z equals zero so z equals 0 is the xy plane, and x equals cosine y equals sine gives us the unit circle. So that means the result is the unit circle on the xy plane. So r1 of t gives the unit circle on the xy plane centered at the origin centered at 0 0 0 so that's r1 of x r1 of t let's look at the next one the next one is x equals cosine of t y equals sine of t x and y are the same it means the xy values still go around a circle but z changes as t changes so what does it mean? Let's evaluate a couple of points and then see what we get. So I always put the x, y, z axis in this order. Notice that you have to have the right hand rule. So let's plug in different values of t and see what we get. So t and then r2 of t. So if you plug in t equals 0, we get 1, 0, 0. So we get this point right here if we plug in pi over 2 we get 0 cosine of pi over 2 is 0 sine of pi over 2 is 1 and pi over 2 so 0 1 is right here but then I'll have to move 2 pi up so it's here so I start from here and I go this way so this is the um, this is the way that the curve is traversed and then after that, when you do pi, you get cosine of pi, which is negative 1. So it goes in the back. So it goes in the back here. Sine of pi is 0 and pi. And it also goes up. And we get to this point. So again, the same direction. 
and then we come back and eventually we get to a point above this point. So we get to this point which is probably a little bit higher so it would be something along this uh, along the lines of this so this would be the last point would be if I plug in 2 pi I would get the same 1 0 but the z coordinate would be 2 pi so what is this curve this is a spiral and this is in fact called a helix we'll talk about this curve more later a vector value function is called smooth if the derivative exists and is not equal to the zero vector for all t except possibly at the endpoints. A vector value function is called piecewise smooth if the interval can be divided into a finite number of intervals such that the curve is smooth over each one of them. So if you have a curve like this, you think about this one as one, two, and three. Three pieces of smooth curves. So we need the derivative to exist and we need it to not be equal to zero. And the reason that we want it to not be equal to zero is going to become a little bit more clear when we talk about tangent lines to uh, curves. But just briefly speaking, one of the things we want to do is we don't want to travel along a curve and then stop at some point and then backtrack. We, don't, we want to avoid situations like this. Okay, so let's look at an example. Show that r of t when, r, when t is in r is a smooth vector valued function. So we're going to take the derivative and we're going to show that the derivative exists. So the derivative is going to be negative sine t cosine t zero. And then we're going to show that derivative can never be zero. So if cosine, if uh, r prime of t is equal to zero, that means sine of t and cosine of t are both zero, which is impossible. So we just showed that derivative exists and derivative cannot be zero. Therefore, that means that R of t is in fact smooth. Okay, and that uh, finishes up the problem. Let's look at one more example on uh, smooth. So show that this vector valued function is a piecewise smooth, uh, defines a piecewise, piecewise smooth curve. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the derivative and then we're going to see if it is equal to zero or not. So let's take the derivative r prime of t. Of course, t minus t uh, is differentiable. One minus cosine t is also differentiable and one is also differentiable. So when you differentiate that, we get one minus cosine of t i plus uh, sine of t j. And of course, the k component disappears. So of course, this always exists. Now we'll have to see whether this can be equal to zero or not. So if t prime of r prime of t is equal to zero, we get one minus cosine of t is equal to zero. And we also get sine of t is equal to zero. This one gives us cosine of t equal to one. So we need both of these two to happen, cosine one and sine zero. But of course, when cosine is one, sine is automatically zero. So what are the angles that cosine is 1? Well, it's right here. So that tells us t equals 0 in the range that they gave us. They said t is between 0 and 4 pi, 2 pi and 4 pi. Even though this uh, parameterization is not smooth over the entire interval, but it is smooth from 0 to 2 pi and from 2 pi to 4 pi. The reason it's not smooth over the entire interval 0 to 4 pi is that at 2 pi, derivative is 0. So r of t is smooth on 0 to pi and 2 pi to 4 pi. Therefore, it is piecewise smooth. Therefore, R of t is um, piecewise smooth on the entire interval from 0 to 4 pi. And that solves the problem.
Find a smooth parameterization for the segment joining these two points. I'm spending quite a bit of time talking about parameterizations because they're going to become very important when we deal with uh, line integrals later. So I want you to get comfortable with parameterization. So we have two points, A equals 1, negative 1, 0, B equals 1, 2, 1. And we want to find the segment joining these two. Well, segment is a portion of a line. So I have to write down the equation of a line, and then I'll have to limit the parameters, uh, parameter t. Okay, so in order to write down the equation of a line, we need one point and we need a direction vector. So direction vector would be a, b, which is b minus a, so that's 0, 3, 1. So this is a direction vector. And of course, we also have a point, which is 1, negative 1, 0. So the parameterization, one parameterization would be point, which is 1, negative 1, 0, plus 0t plus 3t plus 1t. So this is our parameterization. Now we'll have to figure out what are the limits of t. So in order to get to 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, in order to get to 1, negative 1, 0, what t would give us that point? t equals 0, because this has to be 0 in order for this to be 0. In order for this point to be equal to 1, 2, 1, so we want this to be 1, 2, 1. So from the last one, we, get, we see that t must be 1. So this is a parameterization for our curve. So to write it down in the vector valued function form, we get 1, negative 1 plus 3t, t. But again, any parameterization must come with the limits of parameters, 0 to 1. So this is our parameterization. But if you look at the problem, they also said to make sure that this parameterization is smooth. So we will have to also show that this parameterization is smooth. So we're going to find the derivative of this parameterization. We are going to get 0, 3, 1, which is not 0. So that means r of t is in fact smooth. So we found the parameterization. And then we showed that this parameterization is in fact smooth. So that solves the problem. Find a smooth parameterization for the circle on the plane x equals 2 with center 2, 1, negative 1, and radius 4. So we will go ahead and do that. So this is the x, y, z axis. Now the center is 2, so it's on this plane, x equals 2. So if I call this one 2, so it's on this plane. And the center is 1 in the positive y-axis and then negative 1 in the uh, z-axis. So if I were to uh, draw the plane y, z plane, I would get 1 comma negative 1. So 1 is here and negative 1 is here. So this is our center. And our radius is 4. So this is the center and the radius is 4. So let's write down the parameterization. Well, x coordinate is 2 because it is on the plane x equals 2. y coordinate would be, because it's a circle centered at 1, negative 1, and radius 4, y coordinate would be 4 cosine, and z coordinate would be 4 sine because it's a circle of radius 4. But the center is moved to 1 and negative 1, so we will have to change these to um, uh, 4 cosine t plus 1 and 4 sine t minus 1. So to write it down, we get r of t equals 2, 4 cosine of t plus 1, and then 4 sine of t minus 1. And of course, again, any parameterization must come with the limits of parameter. So t would be from 0 to 2 pi because it's a full circle and not a half circle. Now they said to find a smooth parameterization. So again, we'll have to take the derivative and then show that the derivative is not 0. So let's take the derivative. Derivative of 2 is 0. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. So that becomes negative 4 sine. And derivative of sine is cosine. 
So this is not equal to zero because sine equals zero and cosine equals zero is not possible. So it's not possible for both sine and cosine to be zero. And that tells us that R of t is in fact smooth. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do another example on parameterization. Find a smooth parameterization for this ellipse. So we know that if we have an ellipse, we can still parameterize it with polar coordinates, but not exactly the same polar coordinates. We have to make some adjustments. So we have x squared plus 2y squared equals 3 squared. So we can apply polar coordinates to this one. x and 2y are going to be 3 cosine of t and 3 sine of t. And this is on the xy plane, so there is no z. And because it's a full ellipse, it would be 0 to 2 pi. t would go from 0 to 2 pi. So to write it down in the vector form, we get 3 cosine of t, 3 halves sine of t, and t ranges from 0 to 2 pi. This is our parameterization, but again they said find a smooth parameterization, so we will have to find the derivative of this and show that the derivative is not zero. So let's take the derivative of r of t. We get negative 3 sine of t, 3 halves cosine of t, which if you set that equal to zero, you will get sine of t and cosine of t is zero, which same with the same argument that we made up there, which is not possible. So since this is not possible, that means r of t is in fact smooth. So we found the parameterization, and then we showed that the parameterization is smooth, which is what they asked us to do. Okay, one more example. Let f of x be a differentiable function over r. Find a smooth parameterization for the graph of f of x on the xy plane. So how do we get the parameterization of a, a graph of a function? Well, what we do is we are going to parameterize that based on x. So this is x, this is y. So basically what we do is this. We say x is equal to t and y is equal to f of t. You could also just write it on x comma y of x. Either way is fine. So the parameterization is going to be r of t equals t comma f of t. This is our parameter. And of course, they said t is real. They said over the entire real line. So we're going to just say t is real. As usual, any parameterization must come along with the limits of parameter, or that is not a complete solution. Now, notice that they said find a smooth parameterization. So again, we will have to make sure that this is in fact a smooth parameterization. So r prime of t is going to be 1 comma f prime of t which of course is not zero because one isn't zero. And that means R of T is in fact smooth. So to summarize what we did today in this video was that to show a, um, a parameterization is smooth, we will have to show that the derivative exists and it is not zero except possibly at the endpoints. To show a parameterization is piecewise smooth, we will have to show you can break it up into pieces that each one of them is smooth. Now, we talked about parameterizations of circles, ellipses, segments, so you'll have to know how to do them. For ellipses and circles, we will use polar coordinates. For segments, we will use the equation of a line. For graphs of functions, we will use x comma f of x. And then to uh, sketch a space curve, we will we find a relation between x, y, z as we did in the first example. So I will see you in the next video.